Good evening. Good evening. I'm uh, Eugene Meyer. I'm executive director of the society. Uh, uh, is okay. It's not. So is this on? <laughs> I was going to. Uh, I was going to MC this, and then I th I thought, gee, may maybe I'll ask. Uh, Richard Willard to pinch hit for me, but uh, <laughs> maybe we've had him do enough for one day. Uh, uh, th thanks, Richard, for uh, the, the the last minute uh, pinch hitting there. Um, I, I was uh, thinking back. This is our fifteenth. Uh, this is our fifteenth national symposium, and therefore our our fifteenth our fifteenth banquet. Uh, and I was thinking back a little bit to th various things I heard in the. In in the, in the earlier days, and you know, from time to time, uh, some of our people were actually charged with being fanatics. I guess that even happens once in a while these days. Uh, and it reminded me of an old uh, story of James of James Thurber's, where uh, from the early days of football, where they had, you know, they had they had these games, and people were enthusiastic, and they they had only one ball in those days. Uh, you know, they didn't have a lot of the, you know, all these hundreds of balls they have for any major game today. They had a big play into the middle of the line, everybody fell on top of everyone else, and the ball burst. Um, and, you know, they were wondering, you know, what do we do? There's no ball. Uh, how do we play? And one of the big tackles who was, had a little bit of blood running down his forehead and his eyes glowing with the joy of the phrase said, to heck with the ball, let's get on with the game. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, so, so if, if you're accused of, uh, uh, if, if any of our students are accused of being fanatics, that's a, uh, you know, you, you might remind some, some of the other students at schools what, what, what real fanatics are like. Um, I, uh, each, each uh, year for the last, uh, I think, se I th at least seven years, uh, the society has been honored to present uh, the Paul, it's Paul Ambator Award. Uh, the, uh, Paul Batar was, a, as most of you know, was a professor at Harvard Law School and then at Chicago Law School and one of the uh, distinguished legal scholars in, in the country. Uh, he had also attended and spoken at every uh, federal society conference uh, at, the, at the time of his passing. Uh, we've uh, been pre in presenting this award now, now as I say, the, the, the first recipient was Stephen Carter at Yale. It's been presented to uh, Randy Barnett, uh, Akia Lamar, who's here tonight, uh, Jeff Miller at Chicago, uh, Jonathan Macy, Robbie George. And the award is for, uh, uh, is for dedication in terms of scholarship and teaching uh, and interest in students it, uh, and dedication to public service. It goes each year to a young academic. Uh, and in, con to consistent with the purpose of the award, we at, we at, we're going to ask uh, the, the, co the committee that makes the awards that is made up of Michael McConnell, who's a colleague of Bator's at Chicago, Charles Freed, who's a longtime colleague of his at Harvard, Tom Bator, who's his son, uh, and there's a National Federal Society representative, which, uh, which I am. And then we have a representative from the uh, University of Chicago Law School student chapter where Batar was teaching. And we're going to ask uh, the uh, Miranda Perry from the University of Chicago, uh, who's our student chapter president there, to present the award con uh, consistent with the emphasis on, on students uh, and on teaching of the award. Miranda? Well, as you can tell from the list of people that have won this award in the past, Mr. Paulson is clearly one of the best young legal scholars today. As such, he has quite an impressive biography and resume that I know I would kill to have, and probably many, if not all, of the students in here would also kill to have. He started at Stanford Law School, and then he finished at Yale Law School, where he also received a degree from the Divinity School. He spent some time in the criminal division of the US Department of Justice, he has also worked at the Center for Law and Religious Freedom for a couple of years, and he spent also a few years at the Office of Legal Counsel working for Dick Thornburg. Since 1991, he's been a professor at the University of Minnesota Law School, where he teaches 
civil procedure, legal ethics, and constitutional law, where he focuses on issues of religious freedom and se constitutional separation of powers. But what sets him apart from all of the other professors that clearly share a distinguished biography from that are what I found to be two strands. First, he shows a real concern for his students. Um, he actually helped start a Federalist Society at the University of Minnesota Law School. And when I was speaking with him earlier today, I asked him what he liked about teaching. And he, a huge glimmer came into his eye and with a show of enthusiasm that I know couldn't have Fain. He just said, well, it's such great fun. And I'm, I, I know I would be lucky if every single one of my professors showed that same amount of enthusiasm. Secondly, in the words of his former roommate, Akhil Amar, he practices what he preaches. To that end, he works as an advocate for people who are trying to defend their constitutional rights to religious liberty. He um, advocates for these people at all courts in all levels. For example, he recently represented um, a young woman named Brittany Settle who received an F on a term paper she wrote um, on Jesus Christ. Her teacher didn't think that was an appropriate subject for a term paper. He also um, testifies before Congress alongside people such as Michael McConnell. And he is an informal advisor to the Senate Judiciary Chair Orrin Hatch. And last but not least, I think what sets him apart is aside from being such a great scholar, he's also a wonderfully nice person and he's very well-rounded, to use a, a trite cliche. However, he's a world-class jazz music, musician and has played at clubs in the village. Since I've never set foot in New York, I wouldn't know what, what they are, but I'm sure they're wonderful. And <laughs> He also, he also has a fantastic sense of humor, which I think comes out in, in some of the titles that he gives to his pieces. So I would like to wrap up by listing some of those, which I think shows how he combines all aspects of his personality into being a scholar as well as a, a wonderfully witty person. Um, hot off the presses, as this evidence is his uh, love for Star Trek, is Captain James T. Kirk and the Enterprise of Constitutional Interpretation. <laughs> Um, there's the most dangerous branch, which of course is a, a, a takeoff on Alexander Bickle's piece. Um, is Lloyd Benson unconstitutional is another one. <laughs> and then there's my personal favorite, which, which shows the highest sign of intelligence, making bad puns. Uh, this was for a conference in Montana on religious, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, and it's re the religious freedom, a riffer runs through it. So. <laughs> And on that note, I would like to present this award to Professor Paulson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Miranda, for that uh, wonderful um, <clears throat> introduction. It's uh, embarrassingly flattering, uh, especially when some of the things said were, were slight distortions of the truth. I am a Stanford Law School dropout <laughs> <clears throat> at a time when I was 22 and floundering around. It took some time before I found out that I actually liked this law school stuff. I said I was in the criminal division of justice. Actually, I was in the criminal justice system. As a <laughs> um, um, I'm, I'm really very honored to, uh, to receive this award uh, from the Federalist Society, in, in part because it is from uh, the Federalist Society. Uh, which is an organization that's very important to me. It was very important to uh, my career uh, development at a very early stage. I was present almost at the creation of the Yale chapter and met such uh, Yale Federalist luminaries as Steve Calabresi, Gary Lawson, um, <clears throat> uh, Mike Rossman, and the, uh, the Devil's Advocate, which was actually an official title position of our chapter, um, Akhil Amar, uh, who was my um, law school roommate, a stranger salt and pepper combination you never saw. Akhil is a conservative's worst nightmare. <clears throat> um, 
a principled liberal. Um, it really is very infuriating to live with him, but I, I credit myself for, for, for toning down his liberalism and actually getting him to take some principled conservative positions. Um, by my, my associations with these people and with other Federalists uh, in various government positions was very critical at a time uh, when I was young in law school in furthering my interests in the law and in furthering public service. Uh, one of the persons who I subsequently came to meet, and this is the, the other reason I'm so uh, uh, honored uh, to have this award, is, is Paul Bator, the man uh, whose name this, this award carries with it. Uh, Miranda didn't mention it. Uh, one of my jobs as a, as a law student, uh, one of my summer clerkships, was in the Justice Department in the Solicitor General's office at a time when Paul Bator was Deputy Solicitor General. He had something to do with getting me there. And I uh, came to learn of his uh, an experience, his generosity with his time his patience, his character, his commitment to truth and to principles, his concern for teaching, his dedication to public service. Um, if this is an award <clears throat> that's supposed to exemplify, uh, go to someone whose life or work e exemplifies those values, I'm very deeply honored and humbled to receive this award because, you know, uh, because well, to borrow a Lloyd Benson line, and <clears throat> I knew Paul Bator. <laughs> Uh, Paul Bator was, was a friend of mine and a friend to me, and I'm no Paul Bator. Um, <clears throat> um, I, I'm very honored and humbled to receive this award, and I thank the Federalist Society. Thank you very much.